We're back on the air. It's Riders Block. I'm Bill Ryder here on CBS Sports HQ. Broadcaster extraordinaire Gus Johnson is going to be on the show. Our own Reed Forgrave got special access to the Duke men's basketball program. We'll give you a feature on that team, the favorite to win the whole thing in March Madness. And of course, we got to talk about OBJ starting right now from New York City. I'll say this, it's a repeat of what I said at my postseason presser. Uh, we didn't sign Odell to trade him, okay? So I know that's all over the place. So understand that, and that's the, all I need to say about that. I would, <laughs> that clip alone, I'm so sorry for you Giants fans. This morning was the second morning in a row where I woke up and thought it, it was a dream, right? Odell Beckham Jr. is not actually a Brown. No, he is, it's still real. What in the world is going on? We've got clips of GM saying basically we're not going to trade the guy. We've got John Dorsey, the GM of the Browns, loading up and making a huge move. We've got OBJ in Cleveland, and we've got a little bit of a psychic sports sprinkled in because if, if and I'll take it back a little bit of the way back machine, last August, Jarvis Landry speaking to CBS Sports called his shot and this would happen. Is this lobbying of your front office to get Odell here via trade <laughs> a reality or is this just Jarvis being the fun guy that we no, all know Jarvis listen, is? Listen, we want to make this reality. You know, we want to make it this reality. We want to make this a destination that players want to come play yeah. in as well, you know, and um, for us, we have to start create, creating that culture, you know, and I think at the end of the day, especially with O, like, I just want to see him happy. I just mm -hmm. want to see him get what he deserves. Like, that means the most to me, no matter where, where is that, but I hope it's here. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? Like, I want to go to Vegas with Jarvis Landry and pl play roulette with that man. You tell me where to gamble, my friend, and I am in. Let's start with the effect that Odell Beckham Jr., the highest priced and maybe the most talented or second most talented receiver in the game, has on the Browns. You can see their Super Bowl odds have utterly and totally skyrocketed up. This makes them a much more dangerous team. Sports lines showing what they got. At many of the books around Vegas, the Browns, the, the Cleveland Browns, the long, hapless Cleveland Browns have better Super Bowl odds than the Packers, than the Bears, than the Chargers, than the Colts. Depends where you look, but you can find 12 to 1, 14 to 1 is the range that the Browns are going to win the Super Bowl. That is the difference maker that Brown has made. And it's not just Brown by himself. It's not OBJ arrives and suddenly the Browns are gonna be a force of nature. You look at that offense. Baker Mayfield, the quarterback, they got Kareem Hunt for a song because of his off-field issues. Nick Chubb is still a stud. OBJ is a stud. Jarvis Landry is a, a stud. David Njoku is a really, really good receiving tight end. 600 receiving yards in that range, four receiving touchdowns last year. It's a really, really nice move for the Browns. There's no way to look at it other than the Browns are going all in. They are being bold. And in the same week when Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell left the Steelers, and we knew Le'Veon wasn't going to be there, that division might just be there for the taking for Cleveland. It's been hard to say that for a long time with a straight face. It's true now. There are some pros and some cons for the Giants. It's hard to get a sense and get our arms around, even two days later, what exactly the front office in New York City, David Gettleman and co, are doing what they are thinking. They seem utterly and totally out of sorts. Look, the Landon Collins move, coupled with this decision, you could get yourself around the idea of a rebuild if Pat Shermer, just a few weeks ago, hadn't come to the podium and, and he looked kind of like a hot, he'd been in a hostage situation, but still told us, no, no, we're, we're, we're going to win now because Eli, he, he can still play. Well, I think Eli can help us win games. And he proved uh, when we started, the players around him started playing better, uh, that he can play at a very high level and help us win games. So, yeah, at this point, I, I'm, I want Eli back. He's back. Get ready to go with him. Look, the list is long and, and now has an exclamation point behind it with, the talent, most talented or second most talented receiver in the game of really important players that the Giants 
have gotten rid of this year, have moved on from. And Landon Collins, just one name of five or six that, as you can see, jump off the screen. Remember, Collins under control had they franchised him for $11 million. Now he's got an $80-plus million contract. You can't succeed, not in the short term, by getting rid of your best players. But if you want to be a Giants fan looking for a positive light, on the first, the first part of this is if you look at Sportsline's predictions, it's not like getting rid of Odell Beckham Jr. has this sizable statistical reaction. The Giants probably weren't going to be very good, and they're still not going to be very good. And so the notion that maybe, and it's a maybe, the Giants have a plan, they're collecting assets, a first rounder and a third rounder are certainly valuable, especially the 17th pick in the draft. Maybe, just maybe, the Giants with Saquon Barkley are going to go out there and build a winner with a good draft that could certainly jumpstart a successful rebuild. Here's the problem, and it's the unanswered question before we pile on the New York Giants. What are they going to do at the quarterback position? I don't believe for a moment that they truly believe that Eli Manning is still the guy. But they may understand that they have him under contract and they have to pay him. And if they're under the philosophical belief with quarterbacks that you can bring in a young quarterback and sit him behind someone like Eli and groom him for the years ahead, and if the Giants go out and they get a quarterback in the first round or they make a move for a guy like Josh Rosen who can be had for a very, very steep discount relative to last year when Rosen was taken 10th overall in the draft by Arizona, if in fact they're going to move on from Rosen and go with Kyler Murray, maybe, just maybe the Giants can turn this into a positive in a year or two. It's easy to get indignant now and have a hot take. The reality is time is going to tell, but at least in the short term, at least in this moment, it feels like there's the chance for a power shift in New York in the NFL. Because as good as Saquon Barkley is, Le'Veon Bell's been pretty good too. And we know the Jets have a quarterback they believe in. We know Sam Darnold has some upside. It feels like he's the guy, could have been a giant. So at least for the moment, the Jets might have the more positive future than the New York Giants been a long time since we could say that as well. We have a lot of stuff to get to. There's a lot going on in the world. Of course, it's March. Really excited to talk to Gus Johnson over over at Fox Sports. Talk some Big East basketball. We'll give you that Duke feature. We'll probably dive in some of the teams that have already punched their ticket to the big dance. All that coming up here on Riders Block when we continue from New York City on your home for streaming sports, CBS Sports HQ, in just a moment. All right, welcome back into the show. Appreciate you being here. I'm Bill Ryder. Earlier had the chance to catch up with Fox Sports' Gus Johnson. He'll be the man on the calls for their coverage of the Big East Tournament. Great guy, talented guy. I think you'll enjoy the conversation. Gus, thanks, uh, thanks so much uh, for making time. Good to see you again. What up, Dollar Bill, my Mansky Lemansky. How you doing, <laughs> man? Thanks for having me. I I'm living the dream. I, I love it. I'm glad we're talking a little hoops. i got to ask you this, though, first and foremost. We have a pretty young staff here at CBS Sports HQ. A lot of Gus Johnson fans on the show that I work on, so they wanted me to ask you, because some aspiring broadcasters, you are one of the best callers, play callers in the business. Do you practice? Is it natural? The guys wanted me to get your insights on how you go about getting ready for those moments. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, and I'm sure those guys know, it's fundamentals, you got to know the guys and, you know, have information and, you know, have some stats and some stories and stuff. But to me, the most important thing is to always make sure that uh, you have a rhythm to this, man. So whatever you need to do to, to get your rhythm, to get, to get your, your, your juices flowing, you know, I like to listen to, to hip hop before uh, I do games. You see the players on there you know, with their headphones on and stuff like that. Well, you know, you don't see me in the background before the game. I got my headphones on. I'm listening to to, to music and, you know, Billy Dan's from MOP. He's got a new six-pack out. So I'm listening to stuff like that and, you know, listen to the words and, and how they flow and stuff like that. So for me, that's a little tip. That's a little secret that uh, that I use to to get myself ready for the game. I love that. When I was writing, I used to listen to music, depending on what the column that I wanted to write, the mood, you know, supportive, uh, attacking, whatever it might be. Can you give us a little more repertoire? What what might be in the Gus Johnson, Big Tourney on Fox playlist coming up here soon? Well, I told you, man, it's um, one of my favorite artists. His name is Billy Dans from the Mash Out Posse, M.O.P., and he just came out with his own solo record, the Billy Dans Six Pack, and uh, I'm listening to that. Came out on Friday, and it's perfect timing because I'm getting ready to get into this 
this in uh, this uh, Big East tournament this week, and so I'm getting my juices flowing. I'm getting my gangster gangster rap on, and I'm and I'm ready to hit the floor. St. John's and DePaul. We're gonna have uh, the kid from from St. John, Shamori Ponds, and he's from Brooklyn. You know, so uh, those are the kind of things that I've been listening to recently. But uh, I'm an old school hip hop head, going all the way back to, you know, Curtis Blow. So uh, and rappers delight. So uh, you know, that's what I use to get to get going, and that's what I'm using right now. Billy Dan Six Pack EP. He's bringing that heat, that fire, and uh, and I love it. I love that. That is so. I was just talking to a young kid, the uh, kid, a young millennial, about how they don't listen to full albums anymore they you know they they hop nope. around so you're just going one that is i love it it is old school all right let's uh let's talk to the big east you know it's interesting we know the, the the teams that are at the top of the list but if if memory serves every single team in the conference this year won at least seven conference games how likely mm -hmm. is it that we could see a surprise team if not win the tournament at least make a pretty deep push i think this is the, i think this big east tournament rather is wide open i mean wide open villanova you know, they kind of backed into the regular season championship game, losing their last game to Seton Hall, and then Marquette loses at home to Georgetown. So Villanova wins the regular season title outright. But when you look at the at the at the conference from top to bottom, you know Villanova can win it. You know Marquette can win it. Although Marcus Howard, he's been nursing a groin injury for the latter part of the season. But then you look at some other teams, Seton Hall, Miles Powell. You know, what Trenton makes, the world takes. That kid is incredible. And uh, they got a good balance on their team. Don't sleep on uh, teams like Creighton, who uh, managed to finish 500 in the conference after a slow start. They can beat anybody. I think that anybody can beat anybody in this Big East tournament. And that's what's going to make it special. You never know what's going to happen. And you could get a monstrous or monstrous upsets. Look at St. John's. They're playing at home. They're not playing well going into the tournament, but they have the home court advantage, and that might be a huge deal for them. So it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, Gus, you brought up Marcus Howard. Assuming that, that he's healthy, this kid is so special. I'm not sure people nationally realize just how good he is. If he's 100%, what can he be not just in the Big East tournament on Fox, but when the actual NCAA tournament rolls around? Oh, my goodness. He could be one of those guys that could set the Big East tournament and the NCAA tournament on fire. I mean, I've never really, except for maybe Glenn Robinson, but I don't think Glenn Robinson, when he was do the big dog stuff, these kind of numbers. I mean, this kid, he'll give you a 50 burger with the quickness. I mean, and he's my height. I'm 5'10 and a half, maybe 5'11 and a half with shoes on. And. <laughs> He, he's just incredible. He's an incredible sport. He's got an incredible handle. And that's what I think people don't really realize. He's got a nasty streak to him, which I love. Um, and he just knows how to play. And if he gets it going, he's going to be the most spectacular thing to watch in March because he can score that basketball with the best of them. And, uh, you know, he's just an incredible, incredible player. Yeah, I, I love his game. All right, so let's presuming he's healthy, knowing everything we know, whether it's Nova, whether it's Marquette, whether it's somebody else, who do you think has from the Big East, Gus, the, the tools, maybe the momentum right now to make the deepest run in the NCAA tournament and or the most surprising run? Uh, Billy, you got to ask tough questions like that. Like, you know, <laughs> come on, killing me here. Um, Villanova's the defending national champion. Eric Pascal, Phil Booth. Colin Gillespie are their leaders, and they're wonderful players. Uh, Pascal's a pro. Uh, Booth should be a pro. And uh, Gillespie, he's only a sophomore, but he's got amazing heart. So I, you got to think that Villanova could do it, could make a deep run. Marquette can score. Uh, Sam Hauser uh, is, a, is a wonderful player. Both Hauser boys on that team are wonderful players. And... Joey and Sam, and then you have Marcus Howard. So you don't want to play them. It depends on the matchup, too. I, I got to see the matchups right. to really determine who will get an opportunity. And then you have Seton Hall, I think, Miles Powell. You know, Cheese is a, is a terrific scorer as well. He's first team all Big East. So those three teams in particular, St. John's has a lot of talent. They have Shabori Ponds, I think Figueroa, Heron. Are, are incredible college players, and they're getting better every day. And uh, 
I think that with the right matchup, St. John's could go. So, so those teams, if Georgetown gets in, you never know. I don't know how deep of a run they'll make, but nobody would expect them to make a deep run. So um, those are the teams that I'm looking at right now. Yeah, you know, guys, I'm I'm 41, and it was only maybe 10 years ago that I covered my first basketball game at MSG, and you know, I was a reporter sitting way up in the nosebleeds, and I got goosebumps. You obviously call games at arenas and stadiums and a multitude of sports around the country. For you, whether it's MSG or other places, are, are there some spots that are particularly special, and you just feel that sensation of whether it's all or whatever it is when you step in to do well, your job? Well, for basketball. There's nothing like the world's most famous arena, um, especially when the Knicks are good. I just, it's, <laughs> it's elect, yeah. it, it's, it just gives me goosebumps thinking about that right now. Gives me goosebumps thinking about the East tournament and, and the crowds. And the, it's just the best arena. It's the best place. It's the best city in the world. It's, it's, it's the garden. And then there are other places that I, that I'm, in love with as well. I'm in love with Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. I like to call it the Carnegie Hall of College Basketball. The acoustics in there are incredible. It's vertical, um, rough arena. For me, college ball, there's no better place to watch a game than uh, rough arena in Lexington, especially for Kentucky is good. So uh, Duke, Cameron, incredible. You know, for announcers, we got to crawl up into this gantry on the top of the stadium. We don't even do the game on the uh, on the floor. Uh, I remember doing my last game there. Tim Duncan was a senior at Wake Forest and came into Cameron and beat, uh, beat Coach Krzyzewski. So those are some places that I really, I love Arkansas too. Arkansas, just a wonderful gym and a wonderful crowd and people down there, crazy. Fayetteville came into their basketball, especially when Nola Richardson was there with 40 minutes of hell. So. You know, those are just a few of the places that I really, really like going to. Gus, appreciate you. will be watching you on, on Fox Big East Tourney. Say hi to Coach Lavin and Jim Jackson and the rest of the crew. Thanks for, thanks for making time, man. My man, appreciate you, Billy. Have a great day. Gus, <laughs> Gus is such a good dude. Such a good dude. All right, we're going to give you some insight on Duke, the favorite to win the whole thing, our own Beach Foregrave went down and visited with several of the members of that team. I think you'll enjoy this feature we put together for you. It's coming up here on the program in just a minute. All right, welcome back into the show. Conference tournament play is underway, but some teams have already felt the sensation. You can see it there of what it's like when you know you're going to the big dance, when you have punched your ticket a little early, so we're going to go inside the numbers on some of those teams that are already celebrating. I love the joy. We start with the number three. The most recent team to punch that ticket is the Patriot League champion Colgate. They are going to the tournament for the third time in school history. Last time they were in the big dance was in 1996 and 1995. Sadly, that's the year 96. I graduated from high school. I'm old. How about the number six? One team who punched their ticket brought an end to a streak. Gonzaga's streak of six straight WCC titles has come to an end after being stunned by St. Mary's. They also snapped the Zags 21 game win streak. Big, big win for St. Mary's. Number four is next up. The Liberty Flames are also going dancing for the fourth time in their school history after upsetting Lipscomb. The Flames won the A-Sun Conference tourney with it being their first year in the conference. Last time they reached the tournament was back in 2013. How about the number 16? Way to go, Bradley. Bradley defied the odds to make the big dance this season. They erased an 18-point deficit in the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. It's Bradley's ninth time back in the tournament. It's their first time, though, back since all the way back in 2006. Next up, the number one, the Gardner-Webb running Bulldogs are going dancing for the first time since becoming a Division I team in 2002-2003. They defeated Radford in the Big South title game. And finally, the number 36, the first team to punch their ticket this season was the Murray State Racers. Projected top five pick, John ja Morant. Morant led the way for the Racers with 36 points against Belmont in the Ohio, Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference Championship. That was easy for me to say. I really, uh, 
really crushed that moment right there. You know who actually crushed the big moment was our own Reed Forgrave. Hoops Insider here at CBS Sports. CBS Sports HQ covers the NBA and college hoops. And he went down and spent some time last week with the Duke Blue Devils, visited with a bunch of their players, and got a really nice bit of insight on what they're about, the favorite to win the whole thing. Think you'll enjoy it. Here it is. We live in this age of sports destiny. Golden State Warriors, they're going to win the title. Alabama, they're going to be in the college football playoff. New England Patriots, they're going to be in the Super Bowl. You guys are the team of destiny right now. What is that feeling, being that college basketball program of destiny? I think we've been in the spotlight for several years. I think this team is different with the hype and attention. It's no question at a higher level. I've programmed myself, I think we've done it as a staff, just to block out the outside noise, we really have. And so we've had enough adversity where we know uh, we have to show up, we have to play well, we have to prepare, uh, where it's not just gonna happen. One more shot, Reddish hits it, and it's win. Duke goes crazy, Coach K, his team gets it done. Every time you turn on the TV, there's something about our team in some capacity, Zion, RJ, the freshman, just blowing somebody out. Barrett, oh, are you kidding? I think it skyrocketed after that first game for us. People saying that we can beat NBA teams. This team can do something really special. We know it's only going to get tougher from here in March. Massive game. Duke's going to blow them out. I didn't really know how to react when he first got injured. I was surprised. I mean, I, just, I didn't expect it, especially that early in the game. When you have a guy with that much dominance on the team and not be able to be there for a while, it opens up more opportunities for guys. With Alex O'Connell stepping up, Jack White, I think we learned a lot. We're a team of fighters. We just stay consistent and really be locked in the whole month. Common goal, and that was just to win a national championship. We have the greatest coach in the world, so I mean, we knew he could, you know, somehow finagle his way and, you know, finesse it. So hopefully, we can just continue to win games. Now it's here, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right, before we sign off, we got to get rolling. We have a very special birthday. Ryan Lanham, the graphics guru here at CBS Sports HQ, and somebody we're lucky enough to include us part of the process of putting this show together. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Ryan. Whenever we do birthdays, the graphics are amazing. Not that, that graphics not amazing, but Ryan couldn't do it because we had to surprise him. So that's, Ryan, we couldn't give you the kind of high level Ryan Lanham graphics that you're, we're accustomed to from you because it's your birthday. So let us just say it this way. Happy birthday, man. You do great work and we appreciate you. CBS Sports HQ continues from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They're gonna catch you up on everything that's trending in the world of sports and Sportsline coming up in 30 minutes. It is good to have the show back on the air. We're back tomorrow at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. See you then.